It's ragu time! Defrost the mince because you're a moron who forgot to take it out yesterday. Gather your ingredients and let's get in full Italian mode for this one. It's gonna be a classic. This is no longer English. Slice, dice, prepare, grate, is herbs. Che cosa dice? Herbs? It's not racist. I've got Italian friends. So this one is an absolute classic. Ragu alla bolognese. There's a load of videos where people debate over what should go in a ragu and if you put this in a ragu, if you put celery or if you don't put celery, you're making it wrong. Well, guess what? Ragu comes from cucina povera, which literally translates to poor kitchen. It was from back in the days when you'd cook with whatever you had available and whatever you could produce. So some of the meals are like pasta alla puttanesca, uh, panzanella, which is bread salad. This is real bottom of the barrel you know, whatever we can make, we're going to eat. So ragu was traditionally made different in every region. The famous one is ragu alla bolognese from Bologna, but there's also ragu alla napoletano, ragu alla barese. The southern Italy one has horse meat in it. We're not going to be that extreme. We're going to make it with beef mince. Just like cucina povera, we're going to cook with things that we've produced on the land at the local Tesco's. We're going to use Dommia sauce. <laughs> I'm going to be in so much trouble. We're going to use Dommia sauce, but if you don't use Dommia sauce, onions, garlic and passata. That's pretty much all Dommia is. But we're going to use cooking from a jar because, you know, why not? Peppers. Turn it over and then you see the segments there. What you want to do is take the knife and follow the segment round, like that. And you don't want to waste any, so go around these as well. So that should be all that's really left. You try not to waste any of Repeat for your second pepper. And then you just want to dice the pepper. Dicing, funny enough, just means to cut it into things that look like dice. Put them in a little bowl, like they do on the cooking shows. Oh, look at that. Carrots. What you want to do is take the knife and scrape it. Scrape some of the skin off because apparently it's where all the nutrients are and you don't just want to peel a good centimetre off everywhere. Mind your fingers, don't want any lawsuits. And then just give them a quick rinse. Chop, chop, chop. Dice the carrots. Repeat for the rest of the carrot. They can go in the same bowl with the peppers because they go in the pan at the same time. Oh dear. Or on the floor, whatever. Your choice. <laughs> Baffo, vieni qua. Luckily, we've got the living Hoover here. I've never seen a doggy who loves carrots this much. He's a sweet boy. You're gonna love this one. You've got your root there. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut through your top bit, bloop, and then you wanna sort of follow the grain and go straight through the middle of the root, like that, look. Kaplow! Peel that. Let's take a, a brief intermission where I cut back to some lovely, beautifully peeled Onions that my assistant's done. Kasplam! Cut some lines nearly all the way to the root, but not quite. And then you want to go halfway through, look. Oh, the amount of times I cut my thumb doing that. Always watch your thumb that sort of chills out at the end. And then another little one through the top. And then grab it like a tennis ball and just bam! Look at that. Beautiful. It's important to remember that it's okay to cry. The thing that's really helped me with all this as well, to be less stressed, is just acknowledging that I'm going to make a mess and just, you know, I'm going to clean it up. So that's the way the world, isn't it? It's going to be better. Things will be better, you know. Even if things are a bit of a mess now, just know that it'll get better. You'll clean them up. It's important to remember that. An important fact to remember, you cannot physically have too much garlic. Nobody's ever died of a garlic overdose, so you put as much garlic as you can actually fit. Sometimes I'll just give myself a time limit and just cut as much garlic as I can in that time. If you are a vampire, then this may not apply to you. Boom! Garlic done in the same bowl with the onion. Can mingle in there, make friends, because they're going to go in at the same time as well. Now let's get a big pan out. Congratulations, you've now finished the hard part. Whack the heat on, this bad boy. Lovely healthy glug of olive oil in there. Fun fact, most Italian olive oil is actually produced in Greece. Bottled and then sent to Italy for distribution, so they can call it Italian. 
the fact that my Greek wife-to-be really stresses whack your onion and your garlic in. Chilli, pepper, you've got to keep that moving as well otherwise it'll burn. 30 seconds, a minute. Just introduce the onion and the garlic to a bit of heat and oil. You want to whack your carrots and peppers in. Give that a good mix. It's Italian food. You've got to be cooking with love and passion. The Italians don't cook because they get hungry. Italians cook for the love of doing it. So you've got to give this a bit of nurture. This isn't like British food, you know, whack on the oven, stick it in there, leave it half an hour, go and watch EastEnders and come back. It's an act of love. You are declaring your love for this pasta. And it needs a bit of tender loving care. You've got to move it, you've got to see to it. You've got to really, you know, be attentive to the needs. It's like when you first start dating a woman, you've got to show it a good time. You've got to take it out. You've got to, you know, lay the moves on it. Consider this pasta to be like a woman. So once I've been in there for a couple of minutes, basically, you just want the vegetables to get a bit soft. Don't be afraid to eat as you go. Keep you nice and fresh. Take your mince that's not fully defrosted, never mind, and just stick it in. Bloop, bang, bang, bloop, blosh, link, dink, bloop. You want to be moving it, you want to be showing it a good time. I would recommend a wooden spatula for doing this, and I've got one in the drawer that's about 10 centimetres that way. But I'm one of these people where, you know, I've started doing something, and even if very quickly I realise it's wrong, I'll just carry on out of sort of stubborn, stubborn stubbornness. You know, like when you start pressure washing and you get three seconds into it and realise that it's going all over your nice jeans and that you should really go and change into something more suitable. I'll just carry on and do like the whole house and the car, both cars. And uh, that's probably not a good quality. That, uh, that's something I could work on. You know what? We'll work on it right now. Let me get a wooden spatula. Look at that. Oh, I'm infinitely better. So there's a lesson somewhere in there, you know? Sometimes all it takes is acknowledging that you've got an issue for, for it to be solved. That colour, not that colour, that colour. Low to medium. So as not to boil it. That is looking beautiful. So once all the red in your meat's disappeared, you need to have some more red in. Shpeep. Well, that wasn't quite uh, <laughs> how we practiced, was it? Shploop! There you go. Turn that down a little bit. Turn that right down. <laughs> and it's time for the secret ingredient! Wine! Multiple channel, d'Abruzzo. Bold and full-bodied. <laughs> sort of like me. Full glass. Just slop it in. Just slop it all in. Oh, look at that. So here's a cool trick. What you want to do is you want to go to turn it off and there's a real sweet spot, that. So, it's Italian, needs care. Every 15 minutes for the next two hours, wash your jar out and stick them in the recycling. Just in case uh, any Italian watching haven't been fully offended, is we're gonna put the cap back on the screw cap wine <laughs> and put the red wine in the fridge. <laughs> oh, that'll upset them. Stir. Keep stirring. Most of all the liquid's actually cooked off by now. So we're about ready to get the spaghetti started. So as we said earlier about the different meats and the different types of ragu and everything, some people will insist you cook it with a certain type of pasta. If it's not linguine, it's not real bolognese, it's not real ragu. Well guess what? It's cucina povera. These people were poor man. They didn't even make pasta with eggs. It was flour and water, so they used whatever bloody shapes they wanted. So go ahead, use whatever you want. Do it with spaghetti, do it with fusilli if you want. Any kind of pasta you want, you can do, because you're the one cooking, not people who tell you what to do, unless you're watching people tell you what to do. In which case, just fo follow, their, follow their advice. That's my advice. Don't forget to keep trying your spaghetti. What you want, look, is a pie, you can't really see it. Tiny little bit of white in the centre, perfect. The Italians call that al dente, which means little white ring in centre. Comes from Latin, I think. If you're feeling extra fancy, you should, whoa, do some, you know, colander stuff. Kablooey. And then remember to take your little piece of kitchen towel, bloop, and just run it round the edge. Ooh, look at that. This Parmigiano is older than my child. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. 
What a sight. Beautiful. Even got enough for the next week. Finally, last thing to do is take a spoon to help you put it back. What are you doing, man? It's just, uh, it's just a portion for, for lunch tomorrow. There's no need to be alarmed. <laughs> And just Tupperware the rest and stick it in the freezer. Job's a good one.